new science, really cool stuff, like really brand spanking new, awesome cutting edge hypothesis that are coming out surrounding the world of how you use more calories when you're on a low carb ketogenic diet than when you're not, like just literally at rest. Okay, so there was a $12 million study that was led by a particular Harvard group and ultimately published in the British Medical Journal a while back that found that we know that people that are on ketosis or in a ketogenic lifestyle are burning more calories at rest. But the study didn't really answer why. And whenever you have a study like this that gives out a glaring detail, all of a sudden you have to start poking holes and you open yourself up to scrutiny. So what's interesting is through some other research, we've been able to see what is actually going on and what could be an interesting hypothesis as to why we burn more energy at rest on a ketogenic diet. You see, with this study, they didn't notice any increase in physical activity, they didn't notice any increase in body temperature, they didn't, inc uh, they didn't notice any increase in non-exercise activity thermogenesis. The point was is that they just saw it straight up that if someone eats carbs, they burn X amount of calories, and if someone burns fat for fuel as ketones, they burn like Y amount of calories. They just burn more, but they didn't know why. We're gonna investigate what's going on. Hey, please do make sure you hit that red subscribe button and then hit that little bell icon to turn on notifications. Also, after this video, if you are doing keto or you're interested in doing keto, check out Thrive Market down in the description, okay? So I've been able to create grocery boxes specifically for low carb diets, for fasting, things like that, because Thrive is an online grocery market. So you don't have to go to the grocery store, you just get stuff delivered right to your doorstep. And I've been able to create these really cool bundles and boxes People always watch my grocery videos, but this just makes it easy. This way you're like, this is what Thomas would recommend I get on keto, make it simple, wham, bam, done. So go ahead and click on that link after you watch this video and check it out. All right, so here's the cool thing. Given what I do, I'm privy to some pretty interesting details that come out in the scientific world. I do some work with a particular guy named Nick Norwitz who works with my team and he's over at Oxford. So he's part of an Oxford group that's doing a lot of interesting research. So this particular research group has uncovered why we might potentially be burning more energy at rest on a ketogenic diet. And it has to do with our brain burning more fat. So literally our brain could be burning the extra energy on a ketogenic diet, the mystery energy. You see, there's a couple things that we know about the brain and ketosis already, okay? Ketones are superior brain fuel, okay? If the brain had a voice, it would tell you that it prefers to consume ketones for fuel over carbs, simply because ketones are cleaner and they just work really well for the brain. The other thing that we know is that when we metabolize energy in the brain, it is a process known as oxidative metabolism, which means we are going to have reactive oxygen species or free radicals that are a byproduct. Newsflash, anytime you create energy from any fuel source, you have some degree of free radicals that are released, okay? It's just like exhaust in your car. You can't really create energy without having some kind of byproduct. Some is more, some is less, okay? Now, the paradox here is that ketones also combat reactive oxygen species. So this is where things get confusing, right? The brain creates this extra energy, this extra reactive oxygen species, but ketones burn cleaner. So if ketones burn cleaner, wouldn't it imply that they would actually burn less calories? It's like if you were to compare a diesel truck to a Tesla, since a Tesla burns cleaner, isn't it more efficient and therefore have less waste and use less calories? Okay, so at first glance, we see that, right? We see like, okay, ketones burn cleaner. So they must actually create less waste and actually utilize less energy. But through some really cool mechanisms that we've discovered, we're finding that ketones burn extra energy in the way of heat via uncoupling proteins. Okay, so this is complicated stuff, but hear me out, stick with me through this video, I will bring it back down to earth a little bit. So there was a study that was published in the Journal of Biological Chemistry that was actually done by this Oxford group that I actually work pretty closely with now. And what they found is that when ketones were present, via exogenous ketones in this case, there was a 50% increase in what is called uncoupling protein four. Now, uncoupling protein four is in a classification of five different uncoupling proteins. And to make things really simple, what an uncoupling protein is, is a protein that dissipates heat in some way or another. Uh, if you've ever heard of brown fat before, brown fat is the kind of fat that's on our body that generates heat. 
Okay, it's like non-shivering uh, thermogenesis. It's, it's fat that literally has a way of radiating and dissipating heat, so we actually stay warm and burn calories. Well, it turns out that uncoupling protein 4 is the only uncoupling protein that exists in the brain. Okay, so when we see an elevation of 50% in uncoupling protein 4, just when ketones are in the equation, we know that something's going on here. The short answer is, we know the extra energy is now going to the brain. So this is really cool. But why is this important and what's actually happening? When a neuron is firing and sending a signal for an action potential, for something to happen, okay, that neuron fires and it sends sort of a surge of voltage, an electrical signal uh, through the mitochondria into what is called ATP synthase. Now ATP synthase is basically just a turbine. It's like a, a hydroelectric dam. So imagine just a surge of electricity, surge of uh, protons coming through and spinning something really fast to create energy. That's in a nutshell how energy is created within the body. Okay, so when neurons fire, they do that. Okay, now as a result of that, you always have some of these electrons that escape and go and create damage throughout the body. Just normal, just day-to-day -day life. But what's really interesting is that when neurons are resting, they dissipate that energy still into the mitochondria, but through uncoupling protein 4. Okay, so what the heck does this mean? Thomas, please bring it back to Earth for us. I'll make it really simple. When the neuron is firing and you're actually trying to create energy in the brain, it's like the voltage is going down a 10-lane freeway. Just whoom, it has a clear ride, okay? Nothing in its path. When the neuron is resting, energy is still getting into the mitochondria, just not at the same surge. So instead of taking the freeway, it's gallivanting around through a side street, but it's still getting there, okay? Now the side street is called uncoupling protein 4. Here's what's cool. Uncoupling protein 4 isn't just a side street into the mitochondria. Uncoupling protein 4 dissipates the extra, extra heat. Okay, so what's going on is not only are we getting a cleaner burning fuel when the neuron is firing, when the neuron is not firing, the, that energy is coming through and it's passing through uncoupling protein 4 and dissipating as extra heat. It's basically getting wasted, but as heat. Okay, think of uncoupling protein 4 like this. Have you ever seen those radiator heaters? Okay, they're kind of funky looking. You plug them into the wall. They take a little while to warm up, and then all of a sudden they generate heat. Well, that's kind of what uncoupling protein 4 is like in your brain. Okay, the cord is the energy coming through the cord, and the uncoupling protein 4 is the radiator, dissipating heat. So basically it's taking extra energy and dissipating it as heat in your noggin. Okay, so the, all the extra energy that we're trying to figure out where it's coming from could very well potentially be coming from this increase in uncoupling protein 4 with extra brain heat. So that little boost of cognitive function that you feel on a ketogenic diet isn't just because you're burning cleaner fuel. Okay, you have more energy and more activity going there in the first place and more uncoupling protein activity. It's a really interesting thing, and I encourage you to share this with your friends and family because it's just exciting stuff. And please do make sure that you give a low-carb ketogenic diet a shot and do it the right way if it's something you're interested in. So when you add it all together, the brain is now literally using more heat, okay? It's cleaning up after itself, but then also you have all the other advantages of the ketogenic diet when it comes down to preserving muscle and keeping lean body tissue. So it turns you into a fat-burning machine because muscle mass is going to equal more body heat and it's going to equal more overall just resting energy metabolism, right? Resting energy expenditure. Okay, and then you have the brain now using more heat. It's pretty interesting. We're burning fat in multiple different ways, and this is just at the beginning, not even counting the histone deacetylase inhibition effects and all the hormonal effects. So I know this has been complex, but I invite you to stick with me through my other videos. On days when I'm filming a bunch of videos, I know that I need to be super articulate. I need to be on my game. My vocabulary needs to be good. I, just, I need to be able to retain information. I need to be able to have the repository of information that I already have in my brain be readily accessible. So what I've done is I've actually written down what I do on a day where I need to use my brain. And I figured I'd share it with you guys because my other videos explain things in a little bit more detail, 
but in some simple forms, because this video is very scientific, I understand that. So as always, please do make sure you keep it locked in here on my channel. Make sure you're always watching my videos, keto, fasting, you name it, and I'll see you in the next one.